here at the Essex Studios with Jilda Horn, Studio 247. Jilda, thanks for taking the time to share with us today. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about your background. The long story short is I went to college to ma major in music. One teacher said one thing to me, I changed to art right then, you know, right the day I was signing up for classes. Switched over to art, graduated to educate children from K through 12 awesome. how to do art. I quickly realized, no, I, I knew it would be restrictive and I would not be able to teach the way I wanted to teach. Somehow muddled into graphic arts, did that for many years, had three boys, freelanced after that so I would have more flexibility. The whole time I'm doing portraiture for people, I'm giving them away. So one day, one of my friends said, I'll pay you to do a portrait. And I went, you'll pay me? <laughs> okay. And so it began there. So I did portrait commissions for many, many years, and I still accept them. Um, but somehow, I began to do some landscapes in between. But, um, and then I landed a studio here. I'd had another studio, but I've been here since 2000. And I was probably one of the first people to to grab a place here. It was a tiny little closet um, while they developed the rest of the studio and put up the walls and created the spaces. So I just landed down there so I wouldn't be working till two o'clock in the morning on commissions. It compartmentalized me, you know, so I could work here, go take care of my children, do the whole thing again. I moved two or three times till I've gotten this studio. I've been here about 10 years and I love it. Cause like, yeah. yeah, it's it's just a better space for me, the light and everything. So, so now that was kind of one of my questions was, and you kind of answered it, but the advantage of having a studio is that it, it allows you to, to really concentrate on your work and what you're right. doing without any interruptions. Mm -hmm. Then I go home and do the things I need to do with full, you know, 100%. And right. here I can be 100%. When I was at home, it was always, you know, as you can imagine, with children fractured. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, a lot of distractions. So, so now tell, tell us a little bit about your style of art and how you came up with your style and, and the different types of paints that you use. How, how do you capture the vivid colors and the depth that you get through the? Well, I, I only use oil. I've done other mediums, but I always come home, <laughs> home to oil because it's just uh, more flexible and it's just more flexible. That's all I can say. I love it and the colors are wonderful and I'm always playing with colors. Um, I've been, I, lately, during COVID, I just felt so constrained at home. So I started sneaking over here and the first painting I did was, I call it my Grim Reaper COVID painting. It's, it just, I just threw everything I was thinking about during COVID up on this poor little canvas. <laughs> and it tells a lot of stories. So yeah. I finished that like March, you know, or when this be all began. And I took a sigh and I went, I'm done with that. So I started painting, I started like blowing up flowers. And so what was small for me became large. I painted small things, but made them larger and started to try and just pick up, you know, the patterns. I really, really love patterns. And so I'm having a really good time with these. And Very cool. It's just... So Tell us a little bit about your process. How, how do you okay. lay out, you know, you, you well, I take a, a lot of, does it just come naturally out of it? No, I have a process. You know, a lot of times we have flowers at our house a lot every week, you know, roses or whatnot. And I just go in with my little, my little phone and um, take pictures, magnify the pictures and isolate and crop and whatnot, do lighting and uh, play with it until I like it. And then I do a tonal painting. A tonal, I usually use Payne's gray and whites, like all these different grays, and come up with a really good, as tight as I can get, a really nice underpainting that that describes what I'm going to do. So after that is done, then I just start putting colors on, and I don't know where, you know, I just... Um, let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's> <laughs> sometimes awesome. there's a rhyme or a reason. A lot of times there's not. And sometimes I'm happy and sometimes I'm not. But um, anyway, that's how I do it. So it's a tonal painting. Uh, 
that gives me the foundation and I think it gives me a lot more depth uh, yeah. because I do layers, layers, layers. I usually go from dark to light and so, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say you get a lot of, you create a lot of depth with that kind of the darker I background. think so. It, it helps brightness. me. Yeah, yeah it's an yeah. old way to paint. It's a classic way to paint, you know, do an underpainting and solve a lot of problems yeah. with, with those underpaintings. Now, so. now, you talked a little bit about the advantages of having a studio in general. What, what would you say about the Essex that, you know, because oh. this is kind of why we're doing this yeah, here. Get me started, bring more yeah. awareness to the Essex. All I can tell you is like, I walked into this place <laughs> probably is 20 years ago, 21 years ago, and I walked down these halls and watched. There, it was all open. There were no walls. Uh, it's a huge warehouse filled with machines, Singer sewing machines, ironing boards, and smoke and billowing, steam billowing, and these people hunched over these machines. And I went. Wow, this is amazing. I couldn't believe I was walking into the year. You know, it seemed like something from World World War II or something. But they made uniforms. I, you know, we all know the story of Essex. But I went, this is amazing. I love it here. So I just grabbed, you know, Trent showed me around. And he said, well, we have this little office. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take yeah, this yeah. little tiny office. And um, I've been here ever since. Every yeah. time I walk in here, I breathe. Yeah. Breathe. Well, and it's cool to have people to kind of spin oh, ideas absolutely. and, and, and Yes, I've managed to gather a lot of people I know. You yeah. know, my friend Trish next door, Steve Jenkins down the hall, and just different people. My, I teach people how to paint from the ground up. Right. He is a retired doctor. He just got a little space down the hall. I said, get a studio here. So uh, he, got, yeah. he snapped a little place that was okay. Yeah, I think we've all kind of grabbed Yeah, <laughs> just get in here and then you can. And the art box, it's like, hey, you yeah. have the studio. Yeah. So uh, what would you say to aspiring artists? You know, somebody just starting out, maybe getting their feet wet, they're really not sure what to do or how to go about, you know, do, do I do shows? Do I do, you know, like you said, you know, you, you started off in one direction and kind of shifted. Yeah, gears. I just, you go with that flow. Um, most of us, I think, are still struggling with all that, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly comfortable painting uh, the marketing thing. I have a lot to learn. <laughs> but doing shows is always good, uh, that's for sure. And I love the art walks. They're just a joy, and I, I miss them. So I'm hoping that we can get back into that sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, Jonah, thanks so much for taking the time to share with us today. You are I really welcome. appreciate it. Your work is amazing. Thank you. And we're so happy you're part of the Essex. Thank you. Thank you.